Hi, everybody. This is Achuta Baba from Nightlight Astrology. I'm sitting down today on Wednesday, December 18th, to talk to you about my upcoming horary astrology class, which begins in June of 2020 and is on sale right now through my Kickstarter uh, until December 31st. So if you purchase it through my Kickstarter, it's $900. If you purchase it uh, normally as the, at the early bird rate, it's $1,299, and the full tuition rate is $1,800. So um, it's a full one-year-long class certification course in horary astrology. Um, if you don't know what horary is, I'm going to tell you what it is in this video and give you a little demonstration. I'm also going to tell you what you, there are some prerequisites for a class in horary, which you should already have sort of under your belt in order to take this class. Uh, many of you will already have it, some of you won't. So um, if when I go over the prerequisites, you don't have those prerequisites, you may want to check out the video that I made on the Ancient Astrology for the Modern Mystic course that I teach, which is the year one program, which would um, allow you to, you know, prepare for this course and maybe take it in 2021. At any rate, uh, this course starts on Sundays in June of 2020, meets at 10 a.m. Eastern time on Sunday mornings. Uh, you can follow along live with the webinars. Everything is also recorded, so you can uh, follow along remotely if your time zone, there's a time zone conflict or your work or it's too early for you or something like that. Uh, so um, the, uh, let's see here. I'm going to start by just telling you about horary astrology, sort of what it is, where it comes from, and why you might be interested in it. Horary astrology is um, arguably the y y sort of youngest branch of astrology, um, though that's debatable. Um, and it comes, again, arguably, debatably, it comes from Indian, Persian, Arabic um, astrologers. There was a time when... Um, Persian, Arabic, and Indian influence in astrology was very strong because astrology had gotten real quiet in the West after the fall of the Roman Empire. And we see the form of horary astrology really flourishing and, um, you know, being, there's a lot of developments in this field of astrology during the medieval era. The horary astrology works like horary means of the hour. And it works like this. I'm the astrologer, I'm sitting at my desk, and let's say I get an email. This is the modern era, of course. So I get an email, and in the email, someone says, uh, I want to know if my daughter will get into the college she's applied to. It's a very specific, outcome-oriented question that someone is asking you that they'd like the answer to. The typically horary questions are yes or no type of answers, or they are answers that uh, involve a certain degree of maybe timing or... Um, Sometimes uh, they are um, out, they're just general outcome oriented or yes or no types of things like will I get the job or you know will she call me back or um, you know is my you know will will my mother uh, die of the cancer that we they've just found or something like that. Sometimes they're very serious. Sometimes they're very light. You can also use horary charts to locate missing objects, missing people, missing animals which is wild, right? But you can, and I, this is something I do as a part of my practice. It's uh, rarer when you get one of those really kind of cool stories, but um, some of you've watched my channel in the past, you know that I was a part of helping a farmer locate a missing bull one time, which was really awesome. I've helped people find their wallets and all sorts of other stuff. It's one of the harder forms of horary astrology, locating missing items, but there is a method. And um, at any rate, uh, but that's the gist. When the astrologer receives the question from what we call the querent, the one asking the question, the astrologer will cast a birth chart for the moment of the question, the moment that the question is received. The chart will be cast from the location of the astrologer, and the astrologer will then look at the chart and assign different planets to different pieces of the story. And we do this according to a set of rules. And then we look at the interactions between those planets that represent different parts of the story. And we, by looking at and analyzing those, we can tell how things are going to go. And that's how the predictions are made. Um, so horary is really fun um, because it's a bit like cracking a code or solving a puzzle. It's a bit more like... Um, a bit more like tarot, like flipping a card or two to get insight into uh, an outcome. Um, and it's a bit more divinatory. It's more of a form of divination. And um, 
learning how to do horary is really fun in class because it's a class that is light on lectures and theory and heavy on practice. The only way to learn horary is really to learn the basics and then just get thrown into doing chart after chart after chart. So the class is a year long, but it meets every other week for the most part, two times a month uh, on the year for 24 total classes, typically 90 minutes for each class. We'll go through some of the basic theory and then we'll practice charts together. And a lot of the times we take charts from one another that we're working on or that we've taken from people or we'll take charts live from the web. Typically I put something out on Facebook and I'll get a bunch of questions back and then we'll plug them in. So, um, Horary is, if you've ever, if you've never done it, it's fantastic and really, it's really, really cool. It's like my, it's easily my favorite form of astrology because it's fast paced. The readings are pretty short and the, but it's, it has this feeling of like solving riddles, solving puzzles. So um, I'm going to give you a demonstration of horary right now. And then, you know, if it sounds cool to you, you might join uh, my class in, in June. So I said it meets on Sundays in June starting, uh, I think it's the 13th or 14th or something like that. Let's see, hold on, let me just give you a sense. So it meets, uh, I think it starts on Sunday, June 14th, uh, 10 a.m. So uh, let's go ahead and see a chart. Now this chart, I happen to just get a response on, which is really cool. And I believe I use this as a demo in, maybe a demo in a previous YouTube lecture too. So, uh, but I didn't, have a I didn't have a response at the time. So this question is from a mother wondering, will my daughter get into uh, the college of her choice, the one that she's really pumped about? Okay, well, um, there is, here's how we do something like this. So I got the reading from her. I got the question from her November 23rd at 2.13 p.m. Eastern time. I cast the chart from my location because I'm the sort of diviner. I'm the one consulting the sky. And so I'm, I'm like the travel agent, <laughs> you know, I, I, I contact the, the planets and talk to them. I cast the chart the moment that I received the question from the location that I received the question in. Okay, so in this case, uh, the person asking the question is always represented by the ascendant ruler. In this case, Aries is on the ascendant. And so we know that Mars is going to be the mother. Ruler of the first house would be the one asking the question. Mom's asking the question. The moon is sometimes also given to the person asking the question unless it's you being used by something else in the question. Well, in this case, the daughter would be the ruler of the fifth house, which is the house of children. So the fifth house would be the woman who's asking. It would be her children. In this case, we're asking about her daughter. So the fifth house ruler comes to represent her daughter. The daughter, the moon is in Libra. So the moon in Libra in the seventh house represents her daughter. Okay, sorry about that. I had a little technical glitch. So the daughter is represented by the moon, ruler of the fifth house. Okay, so that, that's what represents the daughter. Now the school that she wants to go to is going to be represented by the ninth house ruler of universities, and that's Jupiter. So what we need to know basically is, will the moon uh, connect with Jupiter? This would be one way of demonstrating that indeed, the daughter will get into the school of her choice. This is a very nice school that she wanted to go to. Fits Jupiter pretty nicely. And we have a Venus-Jupiter conjunction coming together in the ninth house of higher education, very auspicious. But what tells us the story here is that the moon, what is the, the daughter, right? The, the daughter is the moon. What does she like? She likes Venus because she's in Venus's sign of Libra. And where is she going? She's going to a sextile with Venus in the ninth house of higher education. And Jupiter is the ruler of the ninth house of higher education. And she'll go right from a, um, a sextile with Venus into a sextile with Jupiter. So this is all in all a very auspicious uh, sign for us because what we're seeing is that the object of the daughter's desire, Venus on some level, is going to be... Um, there's going to be a connection with the object of the young girl's desire, Venus in the ninth house of higher education, and then the actual ruler of the ninth house of education, both of which in horary for reasons I, I don't want to get too technical, but both of those are very positive testimonies that would lead us to say, yes, your daughter's going to get into the school that she wants. So um, that was the, that was the simple judgment. And um, 
that's how that is actually how it turned out. The uh, daughter was um, granted. I got a message from mom just a couple days ago saying she got in. She got into the one that she wanted. It was a really nice school. Um, so that's an example of horary. Very simple example. And I apologize. I had a little. I had a weird technical glitch with my computer, so I had to kind of chop this one up a little bit. But that's an example of um, horary at work. Now, in our chart, we do in our class we do charts that are of all different kinds, ranging from relationship issues to court and custody issues to financial questions to issues about missing animals or like all sorts of stuff. Um, and you know, it's, it's really fun and it's a different kind of astrology to throw into the mix of what you do. It's really good at answering simple, direct outcome oriented questions. Should I go back to him? Um, you know, will I be happy if I take the new job? Will the, you know, is the price on this house um, that, that is being, you know, the, um, is the price that's being offered to me by the salesman or this the people who are selling the house fair, or is there anything wrong with the house I'm about to buy or lots of stuff like that. So uh, just a really good, um, helpful, practical, predictive tool in astrology that not a lot of people know about. And it's, it's frankly, it's just really, really cool. If you go back through my archives, you will find many videos where I mentioned the word horary. Those are going, you're going to get more examples of horary in those um, in those videos. So the horary curriculum, again, is 24 courses on the year. There's a Dropbox folder. I'm going to show you what it looks like now so you can just get a sense of that too. Uh, okay, hold on. Okay, so every class is contained within um, a Dropbox folder that looks something like this. Let me, here we go. All right, so for example, uh, my current class is about uh, eight classes in. They started in July. And um, you'll see that there is a bonus content and guest lectures. Pretty much every week throughout the year, I create little bonus talks wherein I'll say, here's four horary charts from my practice. And I'll let people see the ones that I'm working on privately and how I judge them. Um, and then every, like in the first one, we have history and philosophy of horary. The second lesson, asking the questions and assigning planetary signifiers, methods of perfection, dignity, reception, and aspect. Usually there's about four or five, sometimes six lessons that are theoretical. And we learn the theory and practice. And then we jump right in, excuse me, we jump right into live, live horary charts, case studies, and charts that come from my students that, that you are working on. There is a uh, loose syllabus um, that comes with the class and the syllabus outlines, you know, what we do on the year, what our goals are, um, introduction to horary astrology. And you'll see we have like four, about four lessons or so that have to do with how to do astrology. And then everything is different kinds of questions and um, live horary case studies. So, uh, it's a really fun class. It's more, one of my more intimate classes because it's kind of specialized and it's a bit it's a bit more of an advanced class. So typically the class sizes are small. Like this one, I think I have 15 or 20 people in it. So um, yeah, it's, it's really fun. Anyway, uh, if you have any questions about it, feel free to let me know. Again, it starts in June of 2020 and it won't be offered again until June of 2021. You can get it right now through my Kickstarter for 50% off, $900. Uh, there's an optional certification course at the end if you want to do that. Prerequisites for the course. Uh, the prerequisite is that you have to know your essential dignities, uh, which means you have to know what bound rulers are and kind of have to be a little bit familiar with the language of essential dignities. So if I'm saying that, that doesn't make sense to you, you should probably start with my year one ancient astrology for the modern mystic course. Um, you have to know your dignities. You have to know house meanings. Um, you have to know... Um, you know, how, uh, traditional house topics and um, you have to know aspect theory and um, yeah, basically your essential dignities. And uh, then you'll be good. If you know all of that stuff already, you've had some training in classical astrology already, you're probably primed for this course. If you are taking any of my courses already, you're, by the time this class comes around, you'll be more than fine to enter into it as well. So um, 
There is nothing that has helped my practice more in terms of becoming a better, more accurate, more predictive astrologer than horary because horary teaches you how to spot and see things and make really specific predictions like, yes, she's going to get in the school of her choice and she does. Um, and you, you learn how to do that kind of stuff on the fly and it makes you, it's transferable. All the concepts can be translated into your work with birth charts as well. So uh, really amazing tool to add into your toolkit. So I hope this helps. I hope to see some of you in class and thanks for listening. Take care, everyone.